It's starting your day. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how we all, in some way, in some form or fashion, have a pet peeve. <laughs> There's always something about human beings that irks us or irrationally causes us on first reaction to act or behave in a way that's stupid. <laughs> That if you examined it, doesn't make any sense. That you have some prejudice or some bias or some opinion that really is either pickheaded or dumb or stupid or based upon incorrect information. And no matter what the circumstances are, you don't want to know the truth because <laughs> you've already formulated a pet peeve. Well. In Christianity, that's also true in a lot of ways because with good intentions, sometimes people have wrong actions. And when they do that, sometimes they formulate pet peeves that while there's a choice to separate along lines of maybe personal preferences, there's also a tendency to separate yourself along lines of theological reasons that may be or may not be as serious as the person thinks. When you look at the book of Revelation and you read the letters to the seven churches that Jesus spoke to of as not an age of churches, but as each one existing, which was, which is, and which shall be, meaning that they are seven churches. They're not just seven ideas. <laughs> then you find that each one is completely and somehow uniquely different. And while it may apply to ages of what the church has gone through, it also applies to reality of what churches are today. And yet each one of them, God was walking in the midst of them. And they're different. So too, when I explain these devotionals and devotionals, some names just automatically get people on pet peeves like Joyce Meyer. <laughs> some people go off the deep end. Because it's like they get into this women, men, men, women, and all these other things that they haven't talked to a person or they haven't explored for themselves the reality of what God would say to them one-on-one -on -one if they are in the ministry or if they're choosing you know, to walk with him in a personal way. And when I selected this, you know, my wife had already picked it up and looked at it and she did the same thing that I've done with all my devotionals. She, you know, prayed about it and she saw it and, you know, she read the one day that it was and it fit and so she took it home and she enjoys it. And you know what? So do I. <laughs> God brought it into my life specifically because there are certain people that the body of Christ right now has pet peeves against that it doesn't matter what the person might be right or wrong or wherever they're coming from. They just have a choice to be anger about. <laughs> and so what Thessalonians taught us was that whatsoever things were taught us was that to prove all things and to hold fast that which is good. And that in the book of Acts, we are told that the Bereans were more excellent than those of Thessalonica in that they examined the scriptures daily to see what was true and what was applicable to the word of God. And they held on to that which was accurate. Because even in their day, there were times where people would get excited and get carried away in certain areas. But the way I see it is that God sometimes needs to inspire us with swings of the pendulum that some people may be a little overly zealous in one area while maybe a little bit less zealous in another and some people can cause that less zealous person to suddenly turn to God and to walk with him as long as they're pointing to Jesus and the salvation that we all commonly share according to first John then I don't see the problem so in this devotional being one of the eight that, you know, I explain once a month why we chose them, God spoke to me and said that this was a good thing, you know, to share with those that needed to hear 
which was me, that which he would speak through them, which is you too, that we could all participate together in proving what is the acceptable will of God in Christ Jesus. Today, the key to joy, and may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through and separate you from profane things, making you pure and holy, consecrated to God. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved with sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Righteousness is a key to enjoying every single day of your life. Being in right relationship with God is available to us simply through our faith in Jesus Christ. That security gives us peace through every situation, and having peace brings joy. The Word says to listen with expectancy to what God the Lord will say to you, for He will speak peace to His saints, those who are in right standing with Him, and those who don't turn again to self-confident folly. See Psalms 85.8. Before making plans today, listen for God's voice to make sure you follow His peace for your day. And in reality, when you don't, you don't have to freak out, or fall out, or be bummed out, or to get weirded out, or to be any way out. Because God knows your heart, He knows your intent, and He knows the content of what's going to happen today. If you choose the easy way, where it's like God gives you in the morning some preparation, then you go along. And if He does, if you don't have time, and sometimes you run off and do your thing, you know, there's always time to say a quick prayer, to see if God is there, and to hear from His voice, and to walk according to His will. There's always time throughout your day to be in an attitude of prayer, to be in an attitude of presence with Him. You can always take the time in the middle of the day or even in the evening to say, Lord, thank you for what you brought me through even though I didn't have time for you. But the beauty of it is, is that our goal is to have a constant walking, talking, and living with God. So if you do in the morning or you do at noon or you do at night, just do it. <laughs> and don't make doo-doo of it <laughs> because in reality... Every one of us are going to clean up our own messes one way or another and give an explanation for why we did what we did when we did it. <laughs> and I hope that it was because he told you so, or he told you not to, or told you to do. Because that is your goal for your daily emotions, is to know that God chose you to hear him speak and to walk with him according to what he's telling you to do not someone else telling you what to do because everyone there isn't anyone that refuses to tell you what to do for me it's simple whatsoever god tells you to do that you should do and then between you and him <laughs> you guys will figure it out <laughs>